The car market crisis has become a reflection of the struggles faced by America's middle class. In the past, owning a new car was a symbol of stability and progress for middle-income households. It was an achievable goal that represented the fruits of hard work and aspirations. However, the current state of the car market has shattered that dream for many. Despite the recent decline in used car prices, the overall cost of purchasing a vehicle remains exorbitant for most middle-class families. The gap between stagnant wages and soaring car prices has widened significantly, making car ownership an unattainable luxury for many. A study reveals that the price of a new car has skyrocketed by an astonishing $14,000, while median wages have only experienced a modest increase of $1,000. The stark disparity paints a grim picture for middle-class Americans hoping to purchase a new vehicle. Executives from prominent auto companies, such as Toyota and Nissan, have admitted that although some prices may slightly decrease in the future, cars will continue to be an affordable for middle-class families. The days of easily accessible and affordable vehicles are gone, and the prospect of returning to the affordability levels of 2020 seems unlikely. This realization is disheartening for millions of hard-working individuals and families who rely on cars for their daily lives. In our upcoming video, we will delve into the factors contributing to this unaffordability crisis. From the pricing strategies of automakers to the impact of interest rates and the changing landscape of the auto industry, we will explore the intricate web that has led to this dire situation. By shedding light on these issues, we hope to bring awareness to the struggles faced by ordinary Americans and encourage discussions around potential solutions. The current car market crisis in the United States can be attributed to a combination of factors that have put car ownership out of reach for the middle class. Stagnant wages, Inflation, high interest rates, and artificially suppressed car inventories have created a perfect storm of unaffordability. One striking indication of this crisis is the record high average monthly payment for new cars, which now stands at $777. This amount has nearly doubled since 2019, putting a significant strain on middle income households. Even used car models have seen a substantial increase in their average monthly payments, reaching $544. These payment amounts represent a significant portion after-tax income for many middle-class families. Financial experts like Sam Dojo recommend following the one-tenth rule for car purchases, advising buyers to spend no more than 10% or one-tenth of their gross annual income on a car. However, with the average price of a new vehicle reaching $50,000 in the U.S., only households earning $500,000 or more can realistically afford to buy a new car in 2023. Even if buyers stretch their budget and spend 20% of their annual gross income on a car, they would still need to earn at least $250,000 per year. This means that middle-income earners who purchase medium priced cars today are essentially allocating nearly 80% of their gross salary to their car. The factoring in a 20% effective tax rate on their annual gross income, they would find themselves spending almost 100% of their net income solely on their car. Data from the U.S. Census Bureau highlights the alarming trend of car prices outpacing income growth. Over a six-year period, car prices have increased by an average of $14,000, while the average income of middle-class workers has only seen a modest increase of $1,386. 
This means that car prices are rising almost 14 times faster than incomes, forcing many individuals to borrow larger sums for longer periods to finance their car purchases. Consequences of this unaffordability crisis are far-reaching. Middle-class Americans are being burdened with hefty car payments, leaving little room for savings, investments, or other essential expenses. As car prices continue to soar, the dream of owning a car, once a symbol of middle-class prosperity, is slipping further away for many hard-working individuals and families. It is crucial to address these systemic issues and find sustainable solutions that promote accessibility and affordability in the car market. By advocating for fair pricing, support of lending practices, and policies that bolster the middle class, we can strive to restore the promise of car ownership as an attainable goal for all Americans. During the first quarter of this year, the reliance on car financing reached new heights, with over 86% of new cars being purchased through loans. The average loan amount surged to $41,000, the highest recorded since tracking began. Interestingly, these loans are now being stretched over longer terms, with the average new car loan extending to 72 months or six years. However, the increasing popularity of longer-term loans brings with it a set of risks. The Consumer Financial Protection Bureau has sounded the alarm, cautioning borrowers about the potential pitfalls of long-term loans. They highlight that such loans ultimately result in higher overall costs for the car and increase the likelihood of borrowers owing more than the car's actual value. The ominous scenario becomes even more concerning as it indicates that millions of buyers who acquired their vehicles between 2021 and 2023 will witness their debt pile up while their car's value depreciates. This revelation is particularly unsettling considering the sharp decline in used car prices. Unfortunately for many prospective buyers, the plummeting prices of used cars are not translating into more affordable options for everyday Americans, according to Bloomberg reports. The market conditions have forced individuals like Sir Cy Saunders, a 48-year-old single father of two high schoolers, to resort to alternative transportation methods. After the transmission of his 2006 Acura DL failed in January, Saunders, who resides in Pittsburgh, found himself taking the bus while seeking a replacement. Despite obtaining a $17,000 loan from his credit union, he struggled to find a 2016 Honda Accord within his price range, with most models priced at over $25,000. As a result, he is now considering vehicles that are over a decade old acknowledging the limitations imposed by his budget. Saunders expressed his frustration, stating, It is very frustrating. I wanted a newer vehicle that I felt would be more reliable. With a used car, you just never know what you're gonna get. Saunders' predicament is emblematic of the challenges faced by millions of households across the United States. Although wholesale prices of used cars have experienced a sharp decline, car dealerships have been reluctant to pass on the savings to consumers. According to data from Cox Automotive, the average wholesale price of a used car plummeted by 48.9% since November, with certain models witnessing an astonishing 60% drop. In contrast, Car buyers have only observed a 22.04% decrease in prices during the same period, suggesting that dealerships are prioritizing their profit margins over affordability for buyers. According to reports from Cox, the average price of a typical used car has reached approximately $27,000. However, 
Even with this price point, the average monthly payment of $544 remains an affordable for middle-income earners. For over 10 years, car payments in the United States have hovered around $400 per month for new cars and $300 per month for used cars. This amount aligns with what the average American household can comfortably allocate while meeting other essential expenses. As noted by Jonathan Smoke, Chief Economist at Cox. Unfortunately, since November 2019, car payments have steadily increased, surpassing what the typical middle class household can manage. In fact, today, an average monthly payment is nearly double what the middle class can afford, which exacerbates the affordability issue. The new vehicle market continues to cater primarily to affluent buyers, while the used vehicle market still grapples with affordability challenges, as emphasized by Smoke. For those seeking budget-friendly new cars, the options are incredibly limited. Domestic automakers have ceased production of compact cars in the United States due to profitability concerns. The shift away from cheaper models means that a growing number of Americans will find themselves priced out of the car market altogether. Charlie Cheaper, a senior economist at Cox, emphasizes that the notion of every American having a new car in their driveway is no longer the reality we live in. At the core of this problem lies the pricing strategy employed by automakers maintaining lean inventories to keep prices high. Although the semiconductor shortage that caused a collapse in the U.S. car supply and unprecedented price hikes has subsided, production is gradually returning to normal. However, manufacturers are not interested in balancing supply and demand. Instead, they are committed to maintaining slower production rates to ensure substantial profits. Furthermore, the impending shift towards electric vehicles, which cost about 25% more than average cars, is set to worsen the affordability crisis. A Bloomberg report reveals that major manufacturers, including Ford and General Motors, are reaping the benefits of selling fewer but more expensive cars. Despite a decrease in sales volume by 8% compared to 2021, last year's sales of approximately 13 million vehicles in the United States resulted in a combined profit of around $1 trillion for automakers showcasing their prioritization of profitability over affordability. Luxury cars that generate higher revenue have become the top priority for manufacturers, overshadowing cheaper and more popular models that offer lower profit margins. In the past, car manufacturers used to run their plants at full capacity and relieve on deep discounts to sell their inventory across the country. Typically, they maintained 60 to 100 days worth of inventory. However, the current trend is to target roughly half that amount to reduce costs and keep prices high. General Motors CEO, Mary Barrett, recently stated that they will never return to previous inventory levels. Ford CEO, Jim Farley, echoed this sentiment expressing his reluctance to bear the cost of excessive inventory or offer discounts to clear it. Toyota and Nissan have also pledged to adopt a similar strategy, as reported by Bloomberg. Judy Wheeler, Vice President of U.S. Vehicle Sales for Nissan, affirmed in an interview that most manufacturers will not revert to the inventory levels of three or four years ago. Jack Hollis, executive vice president of sales for Toy Old Motor North America, mentioned that they anticipate another year of constrained supply, with prices continuing to rise. It is evident that demand still exceeds supply. 
and the presence of historically high interest rates further compounds the situation. Cars, like home ownership and college education, are increasingly becoming the domain of the affluent. Considering that wages have only grown by 7% since 2018, inflation is still soaring, and gas prices are leading to $100 Phillips, the situation appears bleak. According to Mark Wakefield, the managing director at consulting firm Alex Partners, it could get about $7,000 worse than before the pandemic. At present, a 72-month loan term for an average transaction, $50,000 with a 5% interest rate, will result in $6,813 in interest over the life of the loan. It is likely that many car buyers who finance their purchases at this rate will soon find themselves owing more on their loans than their cars are worth. Sadly, our national auto market is no longer aligned with our needs but instead caters to the desires of the highest bidders. Nearly 30% of the market now comprised is households with an annual income exceeding $150,000, an increase from 22% in 2016. As Wakefield observed, there has been a shift towards wealthier individuals buying cars and the lower end of the market has suffered as a result. Bankrate.com recently conducted an analysis revealing that households with median incomes are unable to afford the average price of a new vehicle in any of the 50 largest cities across the United States. The sun-settling reality indicates that cars are gradually slipping out of the grasp of ordinary Americans. Many individuals are now faced with difficult choices regarding financing options, highlighting the financial strains they are experiencing. Steve Pounds, a personal finance analyst at Bankrate, emphasized that people are confronted with these challenges on a daily basis as the cost of essential items continues to skyrocket. While salaries remain stagnant and living standards deteriorate, the crisis in the car market extends beyond the automotive industry. It is a reflection of a broader societal crisis. It is evident that a significant portion of hard-working Americans are no longer able to afford the cost of living in the country. We encourage you to share your thoughts in the comments and we sincerely appreciate your viewership.